fantastic week in Ireland. The Legends Tour is back in the northwest of England at Formby and Formby Ladies Golf Club. Welcome to coverage of the Stachel PGA Seniors Championship, which is one of the marquee events on the Legends Tour season. It's played over 72 holes, there's a cut on Saturday night, and there's a half million euro prize pot up for grabs, as well as the prestige of being named a PGA Senior Champion. It was certainly one that I wanted to try and win when I when I joined the senior tour, and I was I was lucky enough to do it in my second year, 2011, at Sleely Hall. This is one of my favorite tournaments. And to win a PGA is a PGA. I mean, it's, it's in our career to to win this tournament is is very important. It's a big tournament. I think it's the oldest seniors tournament in the world, and a lot of top players have won it. So you know. To have my name on the trophy was, uh, was special and uh, I'd like to have it again. And to win the PGA at Club was really quite special, you know, with the names on that uh, trophy as well. So it was uh, certainly on my 10 years now on the seniors, it's, uh, it was the best one. When Formby Golf Club was established in 1884, subscription was one guinea. Its long and storied history is proudly displayed in this spectacular clubhouse. The original links were established by Willie Park in 1912 and have since been altered by James Braid, Harry Colt and the 1980 remodel due to coastal erosion. It's the course where Jose Maria Olafabal beat Colin Montgomery to win the RNA Amateur Championship in the club's centenary year in 84. The club also hosted the Curtis Cup and Formby Ladies itself offers a challenging 18 holes within the Formby Golf Estate. More now about this week and the golf course. Formby is up there as one of the best courses in the UK and it's a challenge the players clearly relish. There's four superb golf courses around here, Birkdale, Hillside, Formby and SNA. I've played all of them and you can't split them, they're just brilliant. I have to say the bunker is in perfect position because I've been a lot of <laughs> the bunkers. Uh, but it's a it's beautiful course. Tee shots and bunkers. You've got to treat the bunkers as water hazards because literally if you go in there it's a shot penalty. They're beautifully positioned for the tee boxes we're playing off this week and it's a real challenge with a little bit of wind. Fortunately we haven't got too much wind this week so far but it's still enough to test you. Coming up, Thomas LaVey gives us a bunker masterclass and we'll get you the best of the action from the Celebrity and Alliance series. But it's time to get to the main event. Here's the best of the action from day one, two and three with Kit Alexander and Moran Humphreys. Thank you, Georgie. Beautiful blue skies and just enough wind to make things interesting on day one. No problems for Emmanuel Canonica though, as he notched up seven birdies in a bogey-free opening 65. This one on 18 completed a storming back nine of just 30 shots. But the man playing the best golf on day one was the Brazilian Adilson da Silva. Oh, By the time shot. he reached the 12th, he was four under par, and this gorgeous bunker shot helps him save his par there. Legends Tour rookie De Silva would also finish quickly with four birdies in the last six holes, including this smooth stroke on 14. His superb 64 was enough for the first round lead. On to day two, and it was a little bit more overcast at Formby. And it was a horrid start for Canonica. A triple bogey seven and three bogeys saw him out in 40. But the Italian bounced back with eight birdies on the card and a stormy back nine of 30. He's nine under par for his two days' work. Adilson de Silva continued his fine form with birdies at three and 11. A first drop shot of the tournament would come at 13, but this putt on the last gave him a birdie, birdie finish and 11 under par total. So de Silva still the man to catch as we head into day three. And this putt on the 16th for former Ryder Cup man Jochen Haven sums up his fortunes a birdie putt finding an irritating way to stay out rather than dropping in. He signed for a 73 and an 8 under par tally. 
South Africa's James Kingston started with rounds of 71 and 70, but he propelled himself up the leaderboard with a third round of 66. This excellent pitch on 17, setting up one of his eight birdies. For the leader to silver, it was all pars through the first four holes. Then this sweet putt for a birdie at the fifth got him to 12 under. Things got even better for the 12-time Sunshine Tour winner. A tricky position. But he would hold this magical chip for an eagle on the eighth to climb to minus 14. And his repertoire of chip shots continued here at the 17th for his final birdie of the day in a round of 67. So far, 15 birdies, one eagle and just one bogey. That's some golf he's playing. An absolutely imperious display from De Silva over the first three days has given him a healthy seven shot advantage going into the final round. I'm feeling okay. It's like I'm, I'm just trying not to think too much about it. I'm just trying to just get on with my thing. If, if I play well and I deserve to win, so be it. It's De Silva's to lose, but that means freedom for the chasing pack. His nearest challengers, Hegman and Kingston, have already boomed drives down the middle on the first warrant. So all De Silva needs to do here is have a nice, smooth swing, get it on the fairway, get himself off to a decent start. Relied on rhythm there, nothing forced with that. You could see that club hit speed just over 100 miles an hour. Carry 242, and that's what he wanted, the ball down the fairway. Put the pressure back on the others. You can see the amount of chase there, of course. It is a Lynx golf course. You don't need to overpower Formby, do you? And De Silva has just kept it in play brilliantly this week. He is a big hitter, though. Canonica here with his second into two. Yeah, small in stature, but a powerful player. Always has been on the tour. Three times on the main tour, he led driving distance. And how about that for an iron shot? That nearly popped in the hole for a two. Which just goes to show anything can happen on the final day. De Silva, great view of the flag there over that bunker. It's incredible that he's only dropped one shot so far this week in the opening three rounds. He's certainly been very steady and playing Formby, one of the real great golf courses in England. Beautiful Lynx course, now Kingston. You can see Hagman's ball ahead of him as well, and it's imperative that these guys pick up some early birdies to try and put some pressure on De Silva at the top. It's going to be an outside chance for Kingston there. Now the former Ryder Cup man, Hegman. First Swedish player ever to play in a Ryder Cup, twice a vice captain. And a very aggressive player and a very happy chappy too. Always see him out on the course with a smile on his face. I was amazed he was the first Swede, a real trendsetter. Archer's been in trouble here on the second at the back. He's got this for a bogey. Well yes, and that'll be very dispiriting for him. A man who's used to shooting low scores. He once shot a 60 at Celtic Manor, had a putt for a 59. Really good player, but I'm sure he'll bounce back. Letta Silva, a little bit of distance in this, just wants to steady it. Hopefully he can get it to the hole. Any nerves and he'll likely start coming up short on the greens. Well, he has done there to an extent. So hard when you have such a big lead. The I suppose the idea is to protect it, but then you get negative. Johnson to save his par from about 10 feet on the second. And he made a bogey on the opening hole. Johnson said not the start he wanted. Bogey, bogey. Yeah. And the conditions for scoring are pretty good out there. We've seen some no low numbers in the mid 60s through the week. Fans have been treated to plenty of action. And now Canonica, who had a putt to get in the playoff last week. 
You have to believe that this man's going to win on the Legends Tour soon. His game is just too good not to be a winner. It is the putter, though, that sometimes holds him back. James Kingston for the ideal start for birdie at the opening hole. And here's a man who can putt. Putted quite brilliantly so far this season. He's had a win, a second and a third. Plenty of other top tens too. A couple of wins on the DP World Tour in 2007 and 2009. So he's a man who knows how to get over the, the finishing line. Hegman for his opening birdie here at the first inside 10 feet and that absolutely into the heart of the hole great way to start for him so he moves to nine under a little bit more pressure on this par putt for the silver but the way he's been playing you wouldn't expect this to cause him any trouble whatsoever 17 more to go. <laughs> a steady start for the leader. And Heckman joins Kingston as his nearest challengers, albeit still seven shots back. Join us after the break for more final round action from the Stayshore PGA Seniors Championship. back to the Stay Shore PGA Seniors Championship at Formby and Formby Ladies Golf Club. Thomas LeVay exhibited his wonderful bunker play here last year and earlier this week he was showing Georgie how to conquer pot bunkers. Thomas, bonjour. Bonjour. You hit a fantastic shot from here on your final round last year in this par 3 16th. So I want to do pothole bunkers. As an amateur, very scary. What do amateurs struggle with? The first thing they struggle with is to see that, that bank here. They don't realize that the ball, golf ball with the sun iron is going to take off really high. Mm -hmm. So this bank is actually not a problem. Up here. It's a problem up here because it's so tall. You know, it's taller than us on this one. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just, uh, just make sure that you have enough loft on your club, mm -hmm. enough, you know, bounce on the club. So the you can go under the ball and that ball is going to take off. The sand is your friend. The sand is the thing that makes that ball stop. So make sure that you hit the sand, but it's not hit the sand, you know, like, like with what we see a lot. And then I stay here because if I do that, <laughs> if I do that, the ball will not move out of the bunker. Yeah. It's trying to feel like you're lifting a bag of 20 pounds and you're trying to send it to the flag. So if I do that, I'm going to go like short, and follow through. Simple. Show us, show us your right. show us. So us. first thing, when I go in a bunker, I look at the light. Where can I go onto that green, the easiest way possible. Okay. And from there, if it's possible, then I'm gonna do like simple stuff. First thing, put the loft of the club as much as I can. So put that face flat on the ground. Yeah. Okay, not like this, like that. Okay. So from there, the bounce of the club, that the, fa the, the sole here is gonna go straight up and it's gonna really bounce in the, in the sand and the ball will be projected on the, the green. First thing I do, put the, the club face flat. So Without it's really open. The sand, obviously. Yes, and then it's gonna go backwards. You see, my normal position is here. Then I'm gonna go here because the shaft will be, you know, normal now for me. And then from here, all I do is I make not too long of a swing and I make sure I hit the sand and I follow through. Right by the pen. And the ball is not too bad next to the flag. Well, back out to the action in the final round. And as for James Kingston, all pars over the first four holes. But here at the 180 yard fifth hole, a beautiful iron shot gives him his first birdie of the day. It's now two under par for the par three holes this week, and that is some going on these short holes at Formby. Joachim Hegman continued his dream start with birdies at the second and third. He made it four birdies in the first five holes, courtesy of this lengthy putt on the par three fifth. For De Silva, though, par bogey start, but he got it back with the birdie at the very next hole. <laughs> 
Ross and his even for the day. Fifth birdie of the day for Hegman though, at the sixth, and he's suddenly now within three shots of De Silva. Not looking quite so comfortable for the Brazilian as things stand, Warren. Yeah, he's bound to be feeling it a little bit shaky and needs to try and make some birdies, put out of his mind what the others are doing, just focus on his round. Played some glorious little chip shots around the edge of the green. There's another there. It's that word momentum, isn't it? He's just staying where he is, but Hegman's coming flying at him. Johns are now at seven under par, playing his approach into the ninth. Just out of the first cut there. Yes, and blind, he can't see the flag from where he's coming from. So an awkward shot. Or maybe not. Absolutely brilliant. He got the right number, that's for sure. To his compatriot, Hegman. And remember, this is the hole that De Silva eagled yesterday. Long, long eagle putt, though, for Hegman. Up a couple of levels. And he gave that a fair old whack, but it's come up some way short. So he still has that left for his birdie. Well, we just saw that magical blind shot for his second for Johnson. Deserves to hold this for birdie to move to eight under. And he does. Very well done. Par for the front nine, 37 here at Formby. So out in level par for Johnson. Left himself more work than he would have liked for the birdie here, Hegman. Oh, he just can't miss, can he? Absolutely like a robot. Straight in the middle of the hole. And I said he always smiles on the way round, Kit, but he's very focused. Well, 14 under par, and this is getting interesting now. He is within touching distance of this man, De Silva, and if this doesn't go in, two shots is nothing, especially when you started with a seven-shot lead. Yeah, a lot of pressure on this now. Ooh. Well, it was a good stroke. Had enough pace, so he just underborrowed, misread it a little. And it is certainly game on. Who would you rather be in this position, the chaser or the chasee? Always rather be leading. <laughs> and it is De Silva who's leading right now. But in just eight holes, that lead has been cut to two shots. It looks like a two horse race. Let's have a look at this beautiful par four ninth hole. Plenty of trouble down the right with those bunkers and the dunes. The hole turns a little bit to the right. Well protected by bunker and swales. It's slightly elevated green as well. So a tricky hole. 464 yards, but an iron off the tee for Hegman shows how the course is running a little. There. Driving iron, oh, my Sit. goodness me. 100 mile an hour club Sit. speed, but very low flighted ball. And I think he may well have found the bunker. Could have done without the run there. So a little bit of trouble for the Swede. 232 yard carry, that's pretty impressive with that club. Yeah, into a little bit of breeze as well. To Silver out with the driver. Look how high he's pegging. The ball, modern day clubs, lay to launch it in the air. But he's kept it down as well. Trying to play for the chaser. That just 65 feet above ground. Is that going to avoid the bunker? It certainly is. Well, interestingly, one yard less carry as well than Hegman with his driving iron. But he gave that 106 clubhead speed off the first tee. We saw him just over 100 miles an hour, so he didn't leave much behind with his tee shot there. Kononica on the par three tenth. Had a bit of a slow start to the season, but that tied second last week has found him a bit of form and he needed it he's carried that into this week another lovely approach shot he's hitting the ball well with his irons he's a beautiful player from tee to green canonica this man always a delight to watch really good technician beautiful stance and posture he's just carved that a little bit away to the right bunker down that right hand side 
of the carry though 250 yard carry 106 mile an hour swing speed that's pretty good for legends golf he doesn't look too happy i'm not sure if he thinks that might have actually found the bunker might be pleasantly surprised when he gets up there fast little chip here for archer down the slope on the 10th that's a lovely touch got to have good imagination to play links courses have to understand how the ball is going to react once it hits the deck yeah this is really really difficult not a great lie he's got to get it up quickly took a little bit of extra sand there as a bit of safety margin i think their kit that's why it's come up short very deep face the last thing he wanted to do was leave it in the bunker the silver sitting pretty in the fairway ball a little bit above his feet usually means that you can draw the ball unless you can hold on to the face of the club keep it online that's not too bad he'll be very happy with that it's a remarkable story he moved over to Zimbabwe from Brazil when he was just 15 years old yes and then moved down to South Africa Kwa Zulu Natal where this man hails from South Africa that is Kingston's approach and that's delightful right into the heart of the green sets up a birdie chance Johnson to get to nine under par it's his rookie season on the legends tour oh, just slides by on the low side I think he'll be dangerous though still hits it a decent distance Michael Johnson Yes, and he's one of those players that you think must have low blood pressure. I mean, he just ambles his way around the course. Hagman, the one good thing he's got in his favour here is the angle. He's over on the left-hand side. The pin is cut on the right. Seemed to, seemed to get that a little heavy. Maybe the lie not too good for him there at all. So now he's struggling. He's opened the door again for the leader. Kanonica to move to six under par. A little bit of turn from right to left on this one. Oh, beautiful. So another podium finish for him this week would go a long way to moving him up the Legends Tour order of merit. Now, really important little chip shot here for Hegman has to get it up and down oh my goodness me hello what is he doing all that good work so far over the first eight holes could go awry here on nine archer just to tidy up for his part yeah, yeah no problem whatsoever for him What an opening for De Silva with Hegman in so much trouble. If he could knock this in for a three, really bolster his confidence. Oh, nicely done, steady par, out in 37, that's even par. If you'd have said to him at the start of the round, would you take level par for the first nine? He probably would have said, thank you very much. Well, that's the benefit of all the good work he's done over the first three days. He could afford this somewhat slow start to the final round. Hegman firing birdies in all over the place and still hasn't been able to get that close to him. First look at Christian Surveyor now. Yes, a man who was out in 33 today, had four birdies on his card over the front nine. Had a couple so far on the back nine. So still a lot of work to do just to save a double bogey really here for Hegman. Oh my goodness me. I don't know what's going on between the ears now, but I bet it's fairly well scrambled. 
I'm struggling to explain it. He was absolutely wonderful for the first eight holes. And like you say, it's got to be something mental between the ears. Kingston for his birdie to get to double digits under par. What a really good roll that was that didn't go in. At the JCB Championship earlier this year, his putting was so good, he was giving Ernie Els a lesson on the greens, trying to help the Big Easy with his putting. Nicely done. I like this outfit that Christian Surveyor is wearing. I'm not sure I'd get away with it, but... When you're playing golf like he is, you can wear what you want. This to move to seven under. And you can see how it hurts. Been on the tour a long while, played a lot of tournaments. Two-time winner on the DP World Tour, Seva. But when they don't go in, it's a blow to the solar plexus. Oh, and this has to go in for Hegman. It's double bogey. It's still about eight feet. Oh, that is a big, big, big putt for him. Out in 33 with a double bogey on nine. That double bogey for Hegman puts an abrupt stop to his scintillating start to this final round. De Silva's lead is four shots after his level par front nine. Earlier in the week, Jean van der Velde and former Masters champion Ian Woosnam took part in a highly entertaining Q&A session with the public. We'll have more on-course entertainment after the break. to highlights of the Stayshore PGA Seniors Open. Let's catch up with the Celebrity Series events that are heavily oversubscribed, all the big names want to play, and it's a great day for our amateur golfers who get to tee it up with their sporting and showbiz heroes, as well as our professional legends. One man in the field got here via the Golf Lottery, a new partnership for the Legends Tour. It awards funds to okay, golf John. charities while offering prizes like this one, playing with Sean van der Velde and Liverpool legend Robbie Fowler. Obviously fortunate to be playing with Robbie here um, and the, the course, um, never played it before, it's been on my bucket list of ones to play um, and it, it looks amazing, amazing conditions. Um, we're the first draw to have actually won it so yeah, yeah, I would recommend it to anyone and it's supporting good causes. So it's great us walking, it's great us playing golf with the professionals, it's great playing golf, uh, but fundamentally it's raising money for you know for people who, who, who are less fortunate. So uh, that, that's what that's what it should always be about. Well, the Celebrity Series has a charitable purpose too. The big names get to play for a place in the Celebrity Series final in the Indian Ocean. The prize pot is £100,000 for their chosen charities. The competition, therefore, was pretty fierce. Formula One supremo Damon Hill made the putts that got him a place in the Seychelles. It's very good, especially when I tell my wife, which I haven't done yet, so uh, she's going to be very, very excited about that. And. Uh, and it's all an you know, opportunity to win some money for our charity, Halo, which is um, for young people with learning disabilities. So uh, honestly, if I can play golf and help other people, then how good can it get? I mean, you know, that's just insane. Here's how Hill snuck in. He actually lost on countback to Robbie Fowler, but the former Liverpool striker has already secured his place in the lineup. So Damon was rewarded for his toil. And for our lottery winner, Jonathan Roberts, the day was one to remember. It took about uh, till the fifth hole for my heart rate to go below 130, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's nerve wracking. To our amateurs at Formby Golf Club, this is Ian Dallas, holding out after 54 holes. He led the Alliance Amateur Competition from start to finish and received a silver salva for his efforts, coming out on top of a huge field. A lovely addition with the Golf Lottery raising funds for good causes every week. Now back to the main event and the pros battling it out for this Legends Tour title. It's been a topsy-turvy day for former BMW PGA champion Simon Kahn. This snorter of a birdie at the 14th and another at the 16th gets him to one under for the round and five under for the championship. 
James Kingston slipped over par for the day with a bogey on the 10th, but he bounced straight back with this birdie at 11 to stay well in the hunt for a podium finish. No lead is ever big enough when you're trying to win an important championship, but this birdie putt at the 10th for De Silva nearly made his life even easier. How did that stay out? Stays level par for the day. Fantastic final rounds of 65 for Maurizio Molina and 66 for Christian Savaya have moved them well inside the top 10. De Silva leads by four with five to play. Chance to look at this sweeping par four, 430 yards, which bends to the left. An awkward driving hole for the players, quite narrow down there off the tee and a well-protected green by those bunkers and humps and hollows. Fairways and greens should be enough for Adilson de Silva from this point. And he's found plenty of them already this week. Nicely up the back of the ball there. Again, that club head speed, just over 100 miles an hour. And he just made the carry, but a good member's bounce. And he's in the center of the fairway. Strikes me as a man very much in control of his swing at the moment. As is this man, Michael Johnson. We've seen some lovely stuff from him. Short par three in length, just 140 yards. So players should be peppering the flag here, but well protected on that left side by the humps and hollows. Well, that member's bounce brought De Silva beautifully just into the centre of the fairway. Yeah, well committed to that shot. And beautifully played and maybe feeling a little bit more confident now. That's a more aggressive approach shot. More trouble for Hegman though. This kind of stuff could easily grab the hosel of the club, send the ball left. Yeah, since the double bogey on the ninth, it's been all pars for Joachim. He's not been able to find another birdie. Easy. It was the sensible approach. He couldn't really go at the flagstick there from where he was. Simon Khan coming up a, a big false front at the front of this green on 17, but it is an eagle putt. He knows how to win a PGA Championship. Slow down, steady on. Won the BMW PGA Championship back in 2010, then lost a playoff. 2013, the same event. He had a couple of runners-up finishes there at Wentworth. He had a great record. Hagman for his birdie from long range. Come on, get there. Has get to there. give it a go. Oh. And you just hate that in the jaws, right in the center of the hole. That hurts. Three feet out, I thought he had it. Archer on 16 a little curly putt this one from right to left pretty swift too once it comes down the slope whoa oh, absolutely brilliant arms aloft Philip archer rattles it in and moves to six under par can then for his birdie also this one down the slope little tickly well, but he coaxes in. Well done, Simon Kahn. Only had quite a few back problems at the end of his career. So good to see him out here and playing some good golf. Johnson, another one that's going to move from right to left. Oh, I tell you what. How about those two putts from Archer and Jonsson? Two very fine twos. De Silva to get under par for the day and stretch that lead even further. Well, it's not often you get that reaction from a birdie putt when you're that far ahead, but I think that tells you about the little bit of frustration he's been feeling today. He's got one hand on the trophy now. And look at Paul Laurie having a good final round. He's moved into the top 10. Look who he's playing with. Jean van der Veld. The fans loving the old rivalries.
welcome back to the Stayshore PGA Seniors Championship at Formby and Formby Ladies Golf Club. Leader Adilson De Silva made only his third bogey of the tournament on the 15th. It was a safe par on 16 after this swinging birdie try just grazed the edge on the high side. The Hickman, he's not giving up. This curly birdie on the 16th goes in for a two. His first birdie of the back nine and cuts the lead to just three shots with two to play. Yeah, Joachim Hedman just won't lie down. He's making the silver work for this win. But the Swede will need to find something special on the par 5 17th to have a realistic chance of going up 18. De Silva on the 17th, his second shot out with the metal wood, and he's just up and out of that a little quick. And he's held it on line. And, well, just when the others thought that they may be getting a chance to get back into the tournament, he produces a shot like that. Well, Hegman needed something special, and it's De Silva that's found it. Simon Kahn to finish his day with a birdie on 18. How about that? Take a bow, Simon Carr. Round of 72, 69, 71 and 69 for him for a seven under par total. No eagle chance for Hegman. Only a birdie opportunity. Oh, and once again, narrowly misses out. Such a big turning point for him was the ninth hole. Just lost his concentration, making that double bogey. And this made the birdies dry up. Good crowds all week here at Formby, and it's a course that's hosted four amateur championships in 1957, 67, 84, and 2009. Kingston with that claw grip, not able to Find a way to get that in the hole. It's not been his day either out on the course. A little bit surprising. Just one of those days in the office. Johnson looking to force his way onto the podium. This is final full swing of the week. And a good looking swing it was too. Right up the back of the ball. Good flowing action. Plenty of speed in that swing still. De Silva for Eagle that will put it beyond any doubt whatsoever and what a story it's been this week oh. Oh, a rare miss but given he came into the season without any status on the Legends Tour wrote to the organisers for an invite into the first event in Austria finished tied third there and he's kicked on yeah, it's fairy tale stuff isn't it but good to see him making use of his opportunity this week and he'll have a four-shot lead to carry up the 18th. He and his wife were thinking about opening a driving range and, and packing in the Tour Pro lifestyle. I think he'll be playing a little bit longer now. I think he will, as we see Canonica just play this little pitch to the 18th. It's cracked in a fashion, but it's okay. Let's take a look at this closing hole, 440 yards. It's pretty much a straightaway hole normally. Plenty of bunkers though to catch an errant tee shot. And look at all those bunkers surrounding the green. One of the longest greens on the course. So plenty of uh, opportunities for tour officials to put the flag in dastardly positions. One more straight drive. Oh, and how about that? That's an absolute crackerjack shot. Beautifully down the center of the fairway. And finishing like a superstar. I don't think he hits anything other than straight drives, does he? Very consistent with his club speed all day. It's been 101 pretty much with every tee shot, so playing well within himself, but it's meant he's hit a lot of fairways. So Canonica, this though to save his part, to finish nine under. Oh, go in. Well, I 
think his final shot of the week is going to be the shortest shot of the week. 65 on the opening a 69 to close it was that 76 in round three that cost the Italian Philip Archer it's been a consistent week for him 69 70 71 he's got this for a 70 again misses by the narrowest of margins so it will be another 71 puff of the cheeks but it's a seven under par total consistent if lacking a few explosive fireworks that we've seen from some of the other players well can Jonsson find a way to make a birdie or hole a putt on this final green Would you believe it? it? It's a faulty hole. It doesn't work. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> there must be some very good goalkeeper in there anyway. I think there'll be plenty of discussion in the scorer's hut about how those three cuts stayed out. But a good week for Michael Johnson. Eight under par. Back to back 72s over the weekend. Just slowed his early progress. A wonderful golfing country up here in the northwest of England. The fans always come out to support events here. And you would think with a four shot lead he'd be enjoying this, but I bet his heart rate is still up. It's never over until it's over. Good looking swing there though. Well, I think he can enjoy his walk up 80 now. It's definitely over and finishing it the way his form this week has deserved. Yeah, it's always nice to enjoy a walk up to the 18th when you know it's done and dusted. Take the applause and revel in it. He hit the opening tee shot at the 2016 Rio Olympics in his native Brazil, but I think this moment will be right up there with that one, given the history and what he's been through to get here. Even just struggling a little on the last hole, but he's made De Silva really work for his win today. That was a fantastic start to his round. Five birdies in the first six holes. And you can see what it means to De Silva. I think the emotion really starting to overwhelm him already. Eggman really has second place sewn up, so he doesn't have to worry too much about this. But it is for a par. Well, it would have been a nice way for him to finish because he, he put a lot of pressure on the silver. I go ahead because I want you to finish. It's okay. Can I go in there? You get Well, very sportingly, he will tidy up and leave the stage clear for first of all James Kingston and, and then Abilas in the silver. But a good week for Joachim Hedman. That wraps up second place on 12 under par. So Kingston then for his four to close out his day's work. Oh, and at last we see a player hole a putt on the 18th. It can be done. Rounds of 71, 17. That excellent 66 in the third round and somewhat disappointing 74 today for James Kingston. But what a week it's been for this man, De Silva. Can he make one more birdie here at the last? Well, that is the right way for a Dielsen to Silva to seal this title. And what a moment. Came into this season not knowing what his future held on the golf course. Got some invites. And he wins, romps to victory on 18 under par. And just look at that smile. He represents the flag of Brazil, of course, that's where he was born and raised, but moved to Zimbabwe and then South Africa. There'll be a lot of people in that part of the world smiling at that leaderboard. A six-shot victory for Adilson de Silva. And he's done it on one of the biggest events on the Legends Tour circuit. Somehow I just managed to stay focused in trying to do what I needed to do. You know, par sometimes good here. Um, so I just, me and my kid just said, come one shot at a time. And, and that's what it is, and yeah, we just managed to hang in there. 
US Senior Open winner Podrick Harrington still leads the way on the Legends Tour Order of Merit. James Kingston has cemented his position and Adilson De Silva jumps to 10th. He led from the first day to the last and won by a staggering six shots and Adilson De Silva will be considered one of the most popular winners on this season's Legends Tour so far. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon.